Welcome everybody, it's Doogie, and it's 2023, I hope everybody had a great New Year's, and uh, hope you party hardied, partied hard, and now it's, uh, it's a brand new year, but this is my favorite time of uh, the horror year, besides Halloween, because it is my top list from 2022, there have been so many good horror movies this past year in 2022 that this year I'm doing a top 20 list. Yes, that is right. A top 20 horror movie list. And these were all MDKs. And if you're like, what the hell is an MDK? Well, let me tell you, my horror peeps, MDKs. MDKs are movies that, well, well, I'm going to say most of them are MDKs. I'd say about 95% of them are. And uh, my, uh, the way I rate, the movies that I rate is M for murder, bad movie, MD, murder, death, okay, MDK, fucking spectacular, I want to watch it again. And the movies I'm about to present to you is exactly that. My top 20 best horror movies of 2022. And let me tell you, they're just the movies that I've reviewed over the past year, not exactly all brand new 2022 movies. Okay, so I just want to get that out there right now before, like, I'm going to put a movie out there and be like, well, that wasn't 2022. No, no shit. It's just the ones that I've never seen before, so they're ranked. Like, I haven't seen Nope yet. You know, th that I'll be watching very, very soon. That'll be in my 2023 list. Okay, you know what I'm saying? So, um, and if there's any other ones that I did I missed throughout the year, you know, they'll be upcoming. Like, I know the new Evil Dead Rise is coming out this year. I saw the trailer for that. Holy shit. <laughs> That's going to be fucking awesome. Movie called Sick comes on Peacock pretty soon. That looks awesome. Scream 6. The Exorcist movie. Um, and a host of others that you know are coming out that I can't wait to see. I think even Conjuring 4 is coming out later on this year. Just a shit ton of horror coming our way. And next week. Next week is Friday the 13th. So I'm going to try to do a new horror movie review show in celebration of Friday the 13th. I might even talk about my favorite Friday the 13th movie. Yeah, that's a good idea for a show, isn't it? I think it is. I'm going to do it. But let me get into the top 20 of 2022. Are you ready? Let's do it right now. Number 20, squeaking in at number 20, is a movie I recently watched um, a couple weeks ago. And it stars... Uh, I don't know how to say his name. Nikolai Costier, who played Jamie on Game of Thrones. Um, it was produced by Guillermo del Toro. Um, it also stars Jessica Chastain. Um, movie, and directed by, was it, Andres Muschietti. Movie's called Mama. Uh, it was about a father who um, kills his wife. And then takes his kids up to a snowy mountaintop or whatever, a cabin, and plans on killing his kids. When this ghost entity comes out, kills him, and then the girls get lost for like five years. And then the twin brother, you know, ends up getting them. And then this hair ghost thing keeps messing with the family. And, and in the end, you know, uh, one of the girls uh, decides to go with the ghost. The other one stays with the family. And, you know... Um, <clears throat> so that was uh that was uh that was mama if you haven't seen it go check it out the only reason why i didn't like it as much as i thought it was because of the hair thing like when the <laughs> when this ghost is coming it looks like a giant hairball and then it turns into this you know mother creature and you know you know so mama squeaked in at number 20 i think because the fact that the ending was was pretty good like, I went into it thinking both girls were going to come back to the family. But no, it turns out the one wants to stay with Mama. 
mama, mama, you know what I mean? And goes bye bye and she dies with the spirit. I mean, the spirit's already dead already, but so that was my number 20. My number 19 movie of the year was a movie that started off kind of slow but ended with melting my face off. And that movie was called Hunter Hunter. And that starred uh, Devin Sawa, you know, of Final Destination fame. It's about him and his wife who live out in the mountains and trap, you know, and to get money that way. And people start uh, missing and dying and the animals start dying. And it turns out there's a stranger in the woods. You know, so... Um, push comes to shove, you know, throughout this movie. And Devin Saw was the father. He goes out and tries to hunt the, whatever's happening. And it turns out this guy killed the husband. And he comes back to the house. And uh, he ends up uh, murdering their daughter. And then the mother just loses her mind and skins this motherfucker alive. That was the, like probably one of the best endings of a movie that I've seen ever. You know, that... Oh, if you want to see a man get skinned alive, go right ahead. Watch Hunter Hunter. It's amazing. It was awesome. And that why, that why, that why, that's why it made it to the top 20 of the year. If that ending didn't happen, it wouldn't have been in there. And the movie probably would have been an M. But that ending just changed my whole thought process on that movie and it just skyrocketed i love that you should see hunter hunter please go watch that movie right now coming in at number 18 on my list this year is a movie is a tubi original the movie's called hall and it's about a virus that breaks out in this uh hotel during this convention and turns out it was uh, this virus that was released on purpose to see what it would do. And everybody, you know, who gets infected, you know, chokes themselves to death and dies. And, you know, um, it was kind of kind of creepy, kind of scary watching it take place. And the people out in the hallway and the girls trying to reach to the you know, stairs to get the hell out. And just when you think someone escapes... They get into the car, they're driving away, and then the, then the little girl's like, uh, uh, you know, then you know that she's going to die too. So Hall did not have not one damn happy ending. And I like movies like that, like, where there's no hope. You know, that's like, people are like, oh, I like having a happy ending. It's a horror movie. You're not supposed to have a happy ending. Kind of like Train to Busan, if you've seen that one, where that was an amazing zombie movie, but didn't have a happy ending. Or Stephen King's The Mist. That one was a one hell of an ending. Uh, so, Hall. Definitely check that out. And uh, let me know what you think. So we're cruising along here in this top 20. Coming in number 17. It's a sci-fi horror movie. Uh, I believe it's a Russian um, horror movie called Sputnik. And it's about a cosmonaut who comes back to Earth with an alien parasite living in him which comes out at night and he doesn't know that it's in there in him and the special effects are pretty good the the alien's creepy as hell but in the end like like you think it's like it's this murderous thing and you have to kill it and then the people start going after it and then you kind of feel uh, sorry for it sort of and the guy finds out that he has this alien parasite in him and he doesn't want it to die so it's, you know, very, very strange. Um, and uh, the ending, the ending's pretty good. Um, they don't separate it. They don't separate them. Uh, it stays hidden inside. Uh, they escape, and uh, hopefully there'll be a Sputnik 2, because Sputnik 1 was pretty good. So for a sci-fi horror movie, it's been a while. I've seen a real good one. Uh, definitely, 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 definitely. Check out Sputnik and uh, let them know what you think. Coming down in at number 16 is a movie that was one of the first movies that was released uh, theatrical-wise when, when theaters reopened 
after the pandemic, and it was uh, starring uh, Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Um, his movie called The Unholy. It's about a reporter who goes, uh, steps on some kind of toy and ends up being some kind of witch. Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Curse. And it turns out that everybody thinks they're seeing uh, Mary. And everybody comes to this church and there's really this witch and she wants to kill everybody. Have everybody sacrifice themselves, you know, this and that. And um, it's a whole mess. You know, the whole thing's a mess. And, like, it, this one girl is healing people through Mary. You know, she, she was blind, now she's not blind. And everybody she touches, she's healing. And then when she finds out, you know, that this witch is just using her, then obviously her powers go away. And everyone's in an uproar. And, um, you know, it's one of those uh, scary supernatural type movies. And I really liked it. Um... A lot of some, some cool deaths. Um, it was pretty good. I say watch it. It's it's you know it's it's Jeffrey Dean Morgan, man. It's uh, it's Negan. <laughs> yeah, you know, um, check it out. Get scared. You know, and that was. Let's see. The first five movies already done. Now we're into the top fifteen, people. Top fifteen of the year. Let me sip that real quick. Uh, top 15, here we go. Number 15, movie called Spree. It stars Joe Keery and David Arquette. It's about a, uh, you know, a driver who, you know, goes online, kind of like a TikTok type thing or live streams. Um, he decides to go on a murderous rampage and do it live. Pretty interesting. And he fucks people up. You know, everybody thinks, you know, you see him from Stranger Things. Oh, it's the boyfriend from Stranger Things. He, It's Steve, you know. He's not going to do anything wrong. He's fucked up. And he fucks up. He even kills his own father. You know, the movie was pretty damn graphic. It was good. Hmm, interesting. But yeah, check out Spree. I think it's, you know, don't you don't want to miss Spree. Because everybody drives nowadays, you know, for any kind of reason. You know, people live stream everything. Downfall of society. Oh, look, I'm part of it. Yay! No. Anyway, uh, Spree coming in number 15. Uh, number 14 was The Lodge. If you remember that one. That one, uh, directed by Veronica France and Severin Fiali. Is that how you say it? Can't remember. Stars Alicia Silverstone, Richard Armitage. It's about a boyfriend who takes his girlfriend up to the cabin, uh, the cabin, in the snow hills of wherever they were for Christmas. I forgot this is a Christmas movie, to tell you the truth, and I watched that last year. It was the first movie I watched in 2022. Because um, he goes back to town to work, so they stay all together. And this girl apparently survived a uh, cult mass murdering spree. And uh, there is no hope for this movie. And not in a bad way. Like, this movie is creepy as hell. And um, there's no hope for anybody in this movie. <laughs> the ending is bleak as fuck. And it's another one that's like, the ending is like, holy shit. She ends up, you know, killing the father when he comes back. And she's like, totally fucking insane. And she's going to kill the kid. She kills the kid. Everything, like, is just fucked up. Watch The Lodge. It'll mess with your brain, I swear. And it was so good. It was very good. Coming in at number 13 is the first of its kind that I've seen, anyway. And if there are any other movies like this, I want you to tell me what they are. This movie is called The Deep House. Okay, it's directed by Alexander Bastillo and Julian Mori. Um, It's about a haunted underwater house. Come on now. Haunted houses are good. Being underwater makes it even scarier. So these two divers who do, uh, I believe it's a YouTube show or some kind of uh, show like that, they find this lake in France and they heard about this uh, house underwater. So they go to investigate. And of course, this house is haunted. Uh, it's good. Like, I'm like, how's a haunted house underwater going to be scary? Mm, it is. 
I don't want to be trapped in a, haunt, in a haunted house underwater. Hell, I don't want to be trapped in a haunted house in any period. But underwater? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Claustrophobic. Just a little. Claustrophobic. Uh, there's a family in there that murdered people, and now they're trying to get them, you know, the, pe the, the scuba divers. And, uh, ooh, it is... It's scary. It's good. It's really good. And you need to watch it. It's called The Deep House. Please, please watch The Deep House. And that was number <clears throat> 13. Here we're coming up with number 12. <laughs> Halloween ends, ladies and gentlemen. Comes in at number 12. You're probably like, wow, that's one of the most... Um, anticipated movies of the year why is it all the way down at number 12 well because there was 11 better movies that i watched this year i liked halloween ends i just didn't like it enough because when you push a movie saying it's the final confrontation between laurie strode and michael myers and you wait till the last five minutes to do it that's a problem you know i really I enjoyed it. I was really confused in the beginning when it wasn't Michael Myers in the beginning, when it was that babysitter who didn't even really kill the kid. The kid was being a jerk off, and he's the reason why he died. And then he becomes this town pariah, and then he finds Michael Myers in the sewer, beats the shit out of him. I don't know how that happened, and becomes the new Michael Myers. Until Michael Myers comes out from underneath the sewer and decides, oh, I'm going to kill now. And I don't know. It was a good way of introducing a new character or how anybody can be a killer. But if you're going to end the series on the whole thing, your, your selling point is Michael Myers versus Laurie Strode for the final time, that should have been at least maybe halfway through the movie. And it wasn't. So that, that kind of bothered me. So, have, you know, Halloween was good. Halloween Kills was... I liked Halloween Kills. Halloween Ends was the weakest one of the three. <clears throat> but still, good enough to be in my top 20 because... Halloween is my favorite horror movie franchise. Sorry. It's my favorite. So it'll be in my top list. Period. Hmm. Cheers. So. With that being said... Number 11 on this list was a movie directed by Robert Palmer and it's not simply irresistible or addicted to love. That Robert Palmer. No, it is not. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> I Am Alone is a zombie apocalypse movie about a guy who does uh, wilderness videos. He uses his GoPro and all that and he goes to this town. He's getting ready in to go to the Colorado Rockies. And a zombie apocalypse starts. And <clears throat> he gets bit along the way. And then his one friend's trying to find him. And they're, the army interrogating his brother. Making him watch all these videos. They're trying to find him. And they can't find him. And it uh, turns out, you know, he ends up turning to a zombie. But not full zombie. Um, because he doesn't like eating flesh. Which is kind of weird. And then it, right at the end, they capture him. Um, but that's it. So you don't know what's going to happen. Um, it was a different take on a zombie movie. I liked it. I really liked it. I hope they make a sequel so we know what the hell happens. You know, I want to I wanna find out. I need answers. But yeah, so it was really good. Check out I Am Alone. It's uh, came in at number 11 this week. Not this week, this year. Sorry. And now it is time for my top 10 movies of 2022 coming in at number 10 was a movie called and, and very anticipated I might add Hellraiser I like the new Hellraiser directed by David Bruckner it's about time we saw a good Hellraiser again and he didn't disappoint you see how someone becomes one of the Cenobites in the end uh, these Cenobites of course they just fuck people up that's what it's about the only issue I have with Hellraiser, there could have been a little bit more murder, a little, some more deaths. But, can't have it all. 
They're just rebooting it. It was a really good start to a new series of movies. If that's what they're going to do, I really hope they do. It was put out by Hulu. I really, really hope this is the start of something good because uh, it was good. I liked it. So cheers to uh, Hellraiser coming in at number 10. Here, you know what? I can turn this around. There, so you can see my skeleton. Yes, there we go. Coming in number 10, Hellraiser. And so coming in number 9, cracking number 9 is a movie. This one came out of left field. It's a movie called Almost Human. I've had it on my list to watch for almost a year. And I didn't watch it until finally I watched it this year. Out of this world, bonkers, alien movie. A guy gets uh, taken, abducted, comes back with an alien inside him, making a whole new alien life forms in people. He kills every fucking person in sight. And when he tries to get to his ex-girlfriend, um, when he shoots the alien inside her, Yes, that way. That was uh, that was a sight to see. And then she he gets his head bone off, and the alien comes out of his neck. Oh God! Watch Almost Human. It's fucked. It's fucked up. <laughs> There's no happy endings in that one either. Let me tell you. <laughs> Almost Human coming in at number nine. <laughs> number eight. Hold on. It's my friend. Hello, Sydney. See, I could do Ghostface. I could do Ghostface if I want to. He should have asked me to be in Scream 6. I would have went to New York City and filmed the movie. I will cut you tomorrow. Hello? Want to play a game? The game is... Brand new Scream. Scream 5 comes in at number 8 for the year. Great return for Scream. Come on now. Perfect. It was awesome. Except for the one person who died who I thought was never going to die. Bit the dust. <laughs> of course, I'm talking about Dewey. Uh, he bit the dust in Scream 5. Maybe his uh, he'll be a a cameo in Scream 6, like kind of Randy did in Scream 3 and 4. Um, so we'll see. But this one was just awesome. There was tons of murder and tons of killings and blood. And I didn't know who it was. <clears throat> Dewey was the man up until he got stabbed 500 times in the chest. <laughs> um, and I, you know, Scream 6 comes out in a few months. <clears throat> and uh, this one's take place in New York City. And um, they're saying it, you know, tons of more blood and gore. So, hey, bring it on. You keep making them, I'm going to keep watching them. So, number eight, Scream 5. Coming in, number seven is a movie that I just watched. I love this movie. It's one of those comedy horror movies, which, which was awesome. And this movie's called Black Friday. It stars... Bruce Campbell, Michael J. White, and Devin Sawa. One more time. It's about a toy store named We Love Toys, or I Love Toys, whatever it is. On Black Friday, Bruce Campbell plays the uh, manager of the store. Uh, Michael J. White, Devin Sawa, they're all employees, you know, getting ready for this big Thanksgiving sale. And apparently this meteorite crashes and it starts infecting the people. Who are coming into the store to shop for Christmas. And while they're in there. These people are turning into aliens. And just trying to turn everybody into aliens. It's awesome. It's a great. Great movie. Bruce Campbell is funny as hell. Uh, it's just a good time. Like it's very rarely anymore. Do you just sit back. And be like. You're, you're watching a horror movie. And you're just like. <laughs> This is fucking awesome. Black Friday is that. Black Friday is awesome. You there's a lot of laughs, blood, killings. It's good, great stuff. You got aliens, everything. You got aliens. It's perfect. 
perfect. Twice now I said perfect on this show. It's hard to get perfect around here. <clears throat> but number six tried. Tried really hard. In fact, it tried so hard that it came in at number six. Now, when it comes to horror movies and it comes to anthologies, um, there have been some really, really good ones. Or, or I'm going to say anthologies. I'll say movies that there's a couple different stories, but they all round up together. You know what I mean? Like, uh, my favorite one of all time so far is Trick or Treat. And they, I don't know if you heard, but they're making a Trick or Treat 2 finally after all these years. So I'm really excited about that. Um, but they have movies like uh, Southbound, which was amazing. One of my favorite movies. Um, this one is up there with these. And this movie is called Bad Candy. Um... Bad Candy it was directed by Scott Hansen. It stars uh, Zach Gilligan or Galligan. He played Billy in Gremlins. Haven't seen him in forever. And uh, Corey Taylor of uh, Slipknot Stone Sour fame as two DJs who tell stories about the town they live in, which is New Salem. And uh, it turns out that all these horror legends are true, and they all come together in the end. And uh, it's good. It's really good. I was really surprised on how much I liked Bad Candy. Like, I saw that first how much other preview for Bad Candy was, like, maybe a year ago. And I'm like, eh, uh, you know, seems okay. And I finally watched it this year for Halloween. Holy shit. It was good. So watch Bad Candy. All right. You'll thank me later. Now... Before we go any further, we've been through 15 movies. Are you ready for the top five of 2022? Are you? Good. Because I got it for you right now. Right after I sip one more damn time. I lied. More times than one. All right. Can anybody guess what the top five movies I have for the year? Um, you can probably guess at least three or four of them. Because they're that good. Hmm? Yeah, that one. Oh, that one too. Alright, I'll, I'll stop messing with you. Coming in at number five is a movie directed by David Blue Garcia. Yeah? It is the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which came out this year on Netflix. It's about these uh, young entrepreneurs who were buying up hard old Texas. Except the one lady didn't buy, didn't sell, and caused her to have a heart attack. And that just happened to be Leatherface's mother. Bad idea, because he wasn't murdering anybody anymore. Like, he put his chainsaw away and was living a nice quiet life until you fucking murdered his mother and he broke into that fucking wall took out the chainsaw and that is it Eve fucked up all these people all these young entrepreneurs who didn't know what the fuck was happening Whew. that bus scene was just awesome <laughs> Oh my god. Texas Chainsaw Massacre was so good. And people who say, oh, Doogie, that one sucked. Why did it suck? Was not enough blood? Was not enough dismemberings? Killings? Not enough bodies sawed in half? Not enough chainsaw shots? What was it then? Because if you're watching Texas Chainsaw Massacre, you're not watching it for the plot of the movie. You're watching it to see how many fucking people Leatherface kills. And plain and simple to me. And to me, they hit it on all cylinders. And I can't wait for the next one. So what do you got? What do you got? Texas Chainsaw Master coming in at number five. Now number four, I completely did not expect. I saw their preview for it. And I'm like, it looks crazy, 
But I didn't know how crazy this movie was until I watched it. And this movie is called Dash Cam. Okay, Dash Cam was directed by Rob Salvage. And it's about this girl who decides to live stream her trip to Europe. She's in a band in L.A. She's going to see her bandmates in England during the pandemic. And she gets there. She's really an asshole. If you think about it, this is the one of the few movies where the main character, like, is a complete piece of shit. <laughs> and you don't like her. You really do not like her, and you don't care what happens. But you care at the same time, because this movie is so fucking insane. Um, so, yeah, so she steals her friend's car, decides to go to school on her little road trip in England. Or wherever the hell she was. She goes, uh, I think it's kind of like a DoorDash type thing where she's going to pick up a meal at this restaurant that's closed. And the owner of this place says, can you take this lady somewhere? She's like, yeah, sure. So the lady, she puts the lady in the back of a car. The lady's fucking nuts. And she takes her mask off and her fucking mouth is wired shut. And she rips apart her fucking mouth. And oh my god, this lady is like hell on earth. She's fucking with the, oh my god, there are so many fucking things that happen in this movie. I, you, I can't even explain it. Like, the lady floats, and there's cults, and people crashing cars, and getting shot, and this lady's ripping people apart. Oh my, it's, it's nuts. It's complete, utter fucking chaos. And I loved every second of it. <laughs> Whoever made this movie is on drugs. Yeah, I don't know how to also explain it. It was that good. Please watch Dash Cam right now. Do it. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. I'm getting some goosebumps. Some goosebumps in the horrorville. Doogie's horror den starting to freak out. Because now we have entered the zone of top three now these top three movies are top three for a reason because they're amazing awesome bloody as hell scary creepy and people get fucked the fuck up if that's even a thing sure it is so coming in at number three is a movie directed by Scott Cooper uh, it was made, I think, like three years ago. It's been on the shelf for like two years. Which finally got released. And it was worth the wait. This movie is called Antlers. And this movie is about a family in... Is it Oregon? I can't remember. I watched it long ago. Um... About the uh, these uh, people who work in a coal mine, and man, man gets infected with something, and he's turning like insane. And it turns out he's turning into some monster. And anybody he he gets close to or infects, then they start turning into this monster. And it's uh, if you get bit by it, whatever it is, I forget. I forget the name. I forget what it called. The uh, Wendigo, I think it was. Was it Wendigo? I think so. Um. Stars Carrie Russell, Jesse Plemons, um, but oh, there's a lot of blood in this movie, and some good damn killings, and it's awesome. Please watch Antlers; you won't regret it. I'm telling you, Antlers is amazing. That's all I gotta say. Now coming in at number two. This movie put out by 20th Century Fox and Hulu, directed by Dan Trautenberg. And I'm telling you the director so you can really know the uh, other types of movies these directors are doing, have done in the past. Like, I can tell you, you know, who were, were in the movie, but you need to know the directors because it's very important. Because movies aren't great without great directors. People can say, oh, was it acting? Well, how about the fucking director? Hmm. Ding dong. So this movie is a sequel to, was a prequel 
excuse me, prequel to a host of other movies. This movie's called Prey. It's in the Predator world. Set 300 years before the original Predator. When it was just Indians. This alien ship crashes or lands. I don't know if you can tell whether it crashes or not. And um, this Indian girl who's trying to be an Indian warrior comes face to face with this Predator. Ugh, this Predator man. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. This Predator fucks people up in every way possible. Um, the Indian tribes, the wildlife, even these uh, colonizers who are trying to buy land and steal people, this Predator kills them, fucks them up, and then fucks them up again. <laughs> it's that good. Um, there might be a, a Prey too. I really hope there is, but Prey for me is the best Predator movie since the original Predator with Arnold Schwarzenegger, Carl Weathers, uh, Jesse Ventura, Payback Time. Stick around. Get to the chopper! You know, all those good one-liners. And, you know how Arnold says, if it bleeds, we can kill it? Well, one of the Indians, the Comanche warriors say it. He's like, if it bleeds, we can kill it. I'm like, yes, call back a Predator. Awesome. I love it. Check out Prey. You won't regret it because this movie will kick your ass and leave you like, oh, what the fuck, man? So, this is what we've been waiting for. Number one. Number one. No contest what number one is. Number one, my horror peeps in horror land, is a movie directed by Damien Leone. I think it was put out by Bloody Disgusting. Um, it's about <clears throat> a man who shows up in a little movie called, so was it The Ninth Circle or The Sixth Circle? I forget what the name of it. And then All Hallows Eve. <clears throat> And then he shows up in Terrifier. And then this past year, Terrifier 2. That's Art the Clown. Art the Clown is now a household name because of Terrifier 2. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, the best horror movie of the year, no doubt, is Terrifier 2. Art the Clown. Is probably the next best thing since, um, <clears throat> I would say, ooh, Jigsaw, maybe, um, Saw coming out later this year, too. Um, <clears throat> he's gonna be a household name, if he isn't already. With, like, Jason, Michael Myers, Freddy, Leatherface, Ghostface, you know, all these Pretty soon there's going to be an Art the Clown like over here. Because, oh, <laughs> Carnage personified is Art the Clown. Especially in that bedroom scene. Oh my God. Brutal. Brutal, brutal, brutal. Amazing. You will love Terrifier 2. And I don't care if you're scared of clowns. Watch it. <laughs> People are like, no, I ain't watching that shit. Okay, well, you're missing out. Because Terrifier 2... Terrifier 1 was amazing, too. Uh, when he cut the girl in half with the saw. Upside down, cut half down. <laughs> that was fucked up. But what he does to this girl in the bedroom, is he, it might even be more fucked up. It was that good. And now I'm expecting this fucked up scene in every movie that he does now. Because, because now, since Terrifier 2 blew up the way it did and made so much money, they're going to try and repeat that in Terrifier 3. You know, so I'm sure there'll be one scene that's going to be like exploding in our minds. 
Um, but yeah, Terrifier 2. They're calling it a mega slasher, but it's like, it's not a mega slasher. It's like any other slasher movie. You don't have to put it into a different sub category. No. Horror movie. That's it. Slasher. If you want to call it a slasher, of course it's a slasher. He slashes people up to bits. Do you call Leatherface a mega slasher? He uses a fucking chainsaw. <laughs> you know what I mean? But yes, Terrifier 2. Mm, my favorite horror movie of the year. A toast. To all the movies that made the list. And a toast to Art the Clown from Terrifier 2 to being this year's number one horror movie of the year. Cheers. Well, that's it, horror peeps. That's it for 2022 in a nutshell. Congratulations. Nobody wins anything. It's just those are 20 great movies that you should watch. And I'm very excited to see what's coming up in 2023. There are some good ones that I will be watching and will be reviewing very, very soon. So, until next time, my horror peeps, I am Doogie. You have been watching Doogie's Horror Den. And I want to say thank you so much for watching this little, little show of mine for these few years. And I hope we just get keep going up and up and up. Thank you so much. I love you all. I will see you all next time right here on Doogie's Horror Den. Stop laughing at me. It's not funny. See you later. I am Doogie. Just watch a horror movie. What's it gonna do? Scare you? <laughs>